Taking you, taking you to the next level. The next level. You are watching Right Connection TV. Right Connection TV. Let's join Dr. Gloria Williams for today's message. Our title today is Follow Your Leader. Follow Your Leader. Last time we talked about following the real leader, and the real leader is Jesus. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 17 and 18. Look at what this says. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom to serve God. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed. Say, we are changed. Are changed. Say, I am changed. I am changed. Say, I am not the old me. I'm, the old I'm, a I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. You are changed. You're not the old person that you used to be. Once you give your life to Christ, you're a new creature. You're changed. And look what you're changed into. Into the what? What kind of image? What image? Same image. You're changed into the same image as is in the Spirit of God, the Son of God. That image is now reflecting through you. Now, you shouldn't be looking like the evil. You shouldn't be looking like the evil. And what would make you look like the evil? Your actions. Actions. And we have to go back to Matthew and look at the attitudes. The attitudes that the Christian, the child of God should have are the attitudes that come from the spirit of God. Why? Because that's the spirit that's now taking up residence in you and me. But we got to make up in our minds to lend ourselves over to that spirit. See, some people get saved and born again, and they still are obeying the spirit of the devil who used to be their father. See, he's not their father anymore, but they don't realize and understand that this new father can give them new direction and they don't have to still follow the old ways. And that's what we have to do. That's why Paul tells us, he says, renew your mind. What is renew? Get a new mind. Re means to do your mind over again, not the same mind. So you can't have the same mind of way of thinking that you used to have with this new spirit. This new spirit doesn't operate by the old thinking. With this new spirit comes a new mind. See, when you, get the, when, you go to the, when you go to the department store and you buy the kids gifts and the kids toys for Christmas, not only in the box is the toy, but inside the box is the operation of the toy. Tells you how the toy works, what you got to do to make the toy work. Well, see, with Christ, when you get new, when you get born again, you also get a new set of instructions. You get a set of instructions that tells you how the new person works. Amen. How this new, you got to wind this new person up and what you got to do to make them walk right, make them talk right, make them act right. You get the instructions with the new person. You can't take this new person and still be living by uh, uh, some instructions that, that's not a part of the kingdom of God. And that's where we make our mistake. You are born again. You're a child of God. Now you got to start thinking like it. Think like God. Don't think like the world. The world says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. The world says whatever I want to do, whatever makes me feel good, that's what I'm going to do. God says prefer someone else before yourself. God says submit to his will and he will bring you to the place of destiny where you need to go. God says sacrifice flesh for his way. God's way of thinking is different. The world says whatever you see that you want, go and get it, whether you have the money for it or not. Get in debt. It doesn't matter. Hide the car. You can't make the payment. Drive it to the back of the house. 
I just talked to somebody this week and they informed me that doesn't work. The people went inside their gate and got the car. That's the world's way. See, God teaches us to be good stewards. He says you must be a good steward. Manage things well. Don't spend money that you don't have. God says count the cost before you involve yourself in the spending. God teaches us don't spend everything we have. Save some, sow some. See, God's ways are different from the ways of the world. And then when you start learning and applying God's ways, that's when your life really starts to getting on top. It's not going to do it overnight, but it will get there. If you keep doing what God says to do, if you keep following God's will, if you keep following God's word, I'm telling you, I'm a living witness. I promise you, glory to God, you will get to your place of victory and, and destiny in the Lord. But you need, a, you need, you need somebody to, to observe. You need, you need a mentor. You're opening yourself up to somebody speaking into your life. Now, when you do that, you got to realize that they may speak things that you don't want to hear. That's what mentors do. They may speak things and tell you things that you are doing that you may not want them to touch. But if you say you're my mentor, I open myself up, I open my ears, I open my heart to you speaking into my life. I see that you have progressively done things that God has told you to do, and I see that you're successful in your life, and I want you to show me the way. I want to follow your way. God will designate, he will delegate to your life people that you can use as an example. He makes examples of people. The Bible says, Mark. I didn't write that scripture down. You, some of you may know it. It says, mark the perfect man. You've read that before? That means that there are some people that you can identify who are following God's way. And you need to look at those people. You need to observe them. You need to see how they do things. And you need to see how they do it that is done to perfection. The Bible calls them perfect. He doesn't mean that they never make mistakes. That doesn't mean, that's not what perfect means. Perfect means that people have a heart after God. Amen? They have a desire to go after and please God. They don't intentionally do things that are wrong. When you do things intentionally that are not right, that's sin. The Bible says when you know to do right and you don't do it, that's sin to you. And did you know the Bible even says when you don't know to do right and you don't do it, that you'll be beat with some stripes? You're going to suffer the consequences of not doing what's right. That's why it's important to go after God. What does that mean? Seek, find, get information. Find somebody that can help you do it right so you don't have to do it wrong. Are you listening to me? You, you, you know how when you, when you want to get information, you go to the computer, you Google, and you go to the dictionary, you go to resource material, and you look stuff up, right? Well, that's what you have to do in God. You can't just settle and be satisfied with just being saved. So you got to follow a leader that's going to show you the way to be victorious in your life in Christ. You don't want to just go to, let's say, a church where all they do is scream and shout at you and you don't even understand what's being said. Amen. And then you don't know how to even find out what's being said. Amen. In most classes, you can go to the teacher and ask them, you know, help me with this. I heard you say this. I don't quite understand what this meant. And they'll help you uh, decipher the information and understand the information. And, but in some churches, people shouting and screaming and saying things, they don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> but you want to get good information. That's why you want to find a Bible teaching church. You want to find a leader that will teach you and show you the word in the word, that will tell you to go and study the word yourself so that you can get information about what God is saying to you so you can be a better person. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. People take, did you, you know, people take continuing education courses. Why do they do that? Because they want to better equip themselves. They want to improve their gift. They want to improve their skills. So they get continuing education classes. Well, that's what we do around the word of God. No different. We want to learn. We want to hear what God is saying. So you need a leader that you can follow. If you're following somebody that you have no confidence in, that doesn't make sense. 
You, if you're following somebody that you don't trust or you don't believe, that doesn't make sense. The leader you need to follow needs to be somebody that's showing you that they're doing like Jesus, following God. Amen. Amen. Now, this passage of Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, says that we're being changed into the image of God every day. Every day. Do you see yourself? Do you observe yourself? Can you tell that you are making changes in your life? Can you tell that there are things that you used to think and now you know according to the word? Those things are not accurate. So I can't think like that. I'm doing that daily in my life. You should be doing the same thing daily in your life. You should be cutting off things and cutting off people that don't promote your spiritual growth. If people don't promote your spiritual growth, you have to cut them off. Now, cut them off doesn't mean that you don't like them or it doesn't mean that you don't say hello to them. It doesn't mean that. Cut them off means that you don't spend your time fellowshipping with them. You don't allow them to influence or affect your growth in God. Sometimes people can say to you, they say, well, how come every time I talk to you, all you talk about is God? Well, that's the kind of person you need to take note of. And you need to say to yourself, okay, I know how much time I need to spend with this one. See, that's your decision to make. Now, somebody that wants to talk the word and confess the word, that's the kind of person you need to determine. You need to find out how you can spend more time with that kind of person. If you got a friend and you tell them that an action that they're doing and some way that they're acting is out of order, it's not right, and they get upset with you and don't want to be your friend anymore, then you ought to be glad. You ought to be glad. You be glad that you didn't have to cut the relationship off. They did it, and so praise the Lord. Amen. People in God, I'm glad when somebody corrects me. I'm glad when somebody shares something with me that can help my walk in the Lord. Amen. I'm looking for people to be in my life. I, my mentors are people that I'm looking at and I'm seeing they are doing something right in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 And I'm open to them speaking to me, sharing with me, telling me something about my life that may need to be curtailed or something I might need to look at and, and look at it differently. And those are the kind of people you want in your life. You want a leader that you can follow. Now, let me talk to you about following. Let me talk to you about following. When you follow somebody... It doesn't mean that you have to uh, do exactly everything that they're doing, but it does mean that you need to pick up on the principles of their life that they are applying to their lives. If you want to know how to be, how to, if you want to know how to lose weight, let's say, well, you don't want to go to somebody. Okay, I just leave that like that. Right? You answered that. You want to get information from somebody that at least it appears that they are handling and controlling and managing their weight. Am I not right? Okay. If you want to, if you want to go into business, you want to look at somebody that at least it appears to you and shows to you from, 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 from their spreadsheets and, and from their uh, finances that they are doing well in business. I mean, you wouldn't go and buy a business from somebody whose business is going under, would you? No. You want them to show you numbers that show that this business is, is, is increasing, this business is making money, not losing money. I wouldn't buy a business from somebody whose business was losing. And so you don't go to somebody to find out how to be rich if they are, okay, i just leave that right there. No, no. Rich people gain wealth by learning from other rich people. Amen. I know, I know sometimes people that are rich now have gone through bankruptcy. I know that. But they're not bankrupt now. I know some of them have lost things and lost people, but they're not losing now. 
I'm talking about somebody that's walking in wealth. You want to get information. You want to get knowledge from someone who's making it happen. Amen. Amen? Amen. And so it is with the things of God. You don't, you don't want to follow a leader that's living a bad life behind the scenes, a public success and a private failure. You don't want to follow that kind of person. You want to follow somebody who's doing it just the way God says to do it. Amen? Because we don't want to miss heaven. We don't want to miss heaven. Amen. You can give the Lord a praise clap for that if you want. That's good. But we have to follow our leaders. Follow our leaders. Now, watch 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Paul says this. He says this to the church at Corinth. He says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. You see that? Paul instructs the people that are following him to follow him as he follows Christ. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 16 and 17. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. You see that? Paul informs them again to be followers of him. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, in this situation, he tells them, he says, now I'm going to send, I'm going to delegate uh, Timothy to come to you and to lead you in certain areas. Now Paul is telling them, if Timothy comes, who are they to follow? They're to follow Timothy when he comes. And he says, Timothy is going to keep them in remembrance of Paul's ways, which are in Christ. The word here for followers is mimetes, and it means to imitate. It means to mimic the speech of another, mimic the actions of someone else, mimic the nature and the ways of another. It means to mimic, imitate, follow the grace and the spirit that is on someone else, that, that's on your mentor, on your leader. It's just like children who imitate their parents. You are to imitate your leader. It's just like kids in school that follow the leader in the classroom or follow the leader out of the class to the water fountain. You know how teachers line kids up and they put a leader at the top of the line? And they tell all the other kids to follow that person that's leading the line. That's how you're supposed to follow God. That's how you're supposed to follow Christ. You're supposed to follow your leader in the same way. It's as though I am at the head of the line for this group of people. And where I go, that's where you to go. Where I lead, that's where you to follow. How I teach you to talk like Christ, it's not talk, talking about talking like me. It's talking about talking like me as I talk like Christ. Are you listening? You see, too many times we get the picture confused and we see people. See, that's natural. But we need to learn how to operate in the spirit. In the spirit, we're talking about spirit things, not natural things. I'm not necessarily talking about dress like I dress or, or wear your uh, uh, jewelry like I wear mine or where I, or talk with the tone of voice that I talk in, but I'm talking about the speech. Now, see, Jesus said that to a group of people. I just heard that in the spirit. He told them, he said, see, you don't understand. You don't know me because you, don't, you can't even hear my speech. What did he mean? They heard him talking, but they couldn't understand the spirit of his talk. See, again, if you're going to worship God, you got to worship him what? In the spirit in spirit and in truth. That's what Jesus was talking about when he told Nicodemus. He said, Nicodemus, now look, Nick, you're a good boy. You know a lot of things. You got a lot going on. You, you have status in society. You're a lawyer. You, you, you translate the word of God, the law, and you got all this happening for you. But you still need to be born again. See, what does that mean? That means you need the birth of the spirit. Now, when the spirit is in you and you are tapping into that spirit, I want to follow God in my heart. The Bible says in Matthew uh, 22, 37, what does it say? Love the Lord thy God with what? 
all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, that's every part of you. See, when we say every part of you, we're not just talking about the little things that you do. We're talking about every entity, which is your heart, your whole heart. You got to love God with that. Which is your mind, your soulless realm. You got to think like God thinks. In your mind, you got to think the thoughts that God says to think. And then you got to love him with your body. Your body has to conform to the ways of God. Now hold your finger right there where we are. We're reading, and I want you to look at, um, what is it, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse number 23. Look at what this says. Paul says here, he says, And the very God of peace sanctify you, what? Holy. Whole. Whole. Sanctify you whole. How? And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, kept blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's your heart, your mind, and your physical body. All of you needs to be dedicated, must be, has to be dedicated to the things of God. So you can't just love God with your spirit or your heart when you're in church. And then when you get home, your body doesn't love him. You don't love him with your whole body. So you let your body do things that you know is not right. You fornicate. Not y'all. <laughs> Commit adultery. You know, you wear your clothes. You wear, you wear what you call holy clothes in church, but then when you get out of church, you just wear clothes any kind of way you want to wear them over your body. You know when something is showing too much? Because Holy Spirit tells you. But, oh, I ain't in church now. See, you don't realize this is a lifestyle. This is not church. This is not a church thing. It's a lifestyle. A lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle change that you are living now that you're sold out and born again. This is a lifestyle. Are you listening? It's a way of life, man. We ain't trying to trick nobody, fool nobody, play with nobody. We, we just want to live for God. Amen. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. See, you got to think like God. You can't just be, uh, praise the Lord when you get to church. I'm thinking like the things of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when you get out of here, you're just saying all kinds of things. It's not like that. That's not real. See, that's religious. Religious people do holy things when they're around what they think are holy people. And they live any other way that they want to live when they're not around that group of people. No, you need a, you need a leader that's going to tell you that's not right. And then you follow your leader in your living. Do I live like that? No. So you can't represent me. I'm representing Christ. Christ is representing God. So if I'm the leader and I'm representing Christ and I'm following Christ and Christ is following God, if you're following me and I'm the leader and I'm following Christ and Christ is following God, then who are you following? You're following God. Right. Even though you're following him through my footsteps, but I'm following him. So we're all following God. Don't get it wrong and think like, oh, I'm just following Dr. G. I'm just doing what she's saying. I, good grace is alive. I'm tired of doing everything she say. No, it's not me. And furthermore, it's not even my words. It's God's words. Just like Jesus told those people, these are not my words. Why are you trying to kill me? I'm just saying what I heard the Father say. You can't realize that there's a protocol that I'm not representing me, I'm representing him, and you asking to see him, and you're looking at me, I'm representing him, and you want to kill me. You really want to kill God, because I'm not representing me. I'm telling you what he said. If you don't like what I'm telling you, you don't like what he said. So you really don't want to kill me, but I'm just the only one you can see right now. So you're trying to kill me, but you really want to kill him. And you know your arm's not long enough to box with him. 
you have not received Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, we invite you today to ask Jesus to come into your heart and forgive you of your sin. This is the most important life decision you could make. So please write us and let us know you have joined the family of God. Write us at Right Connection, P.O. Box 172-570, Hialeah, Florida, 33017. Or email us, rctv at jesuspeoplemiami.com. We believe that today's message was a blessing to you. To order this message in its entirety, write and send your request to Right Connection, Post Office Box 172-570, Hylia, Florida, 33017. CDs are only $7 and DVDs are only $20. You may also visit our online bookstore at JesusPeopleMiami.org for additional media resources that will strengthen and encourage your faith. Get the courage to be strong. I don't think like the system thinks. I think like the kingdom thinks. I think like God thinks. In this life-changing three-CD teaching series, Dr. Gloria Williams reveals the vital principles on how to gain mental and moral strength to persevere even when things get tough. That takes courage to be able to stand up in the face of adversity and say, my God is with me and my God will support me and my God will provide for me and my God will see me through. Take a step of courage and order this CD package today. Write and send your request along with $20 to Write Connection. Post Office Box 172-570, Hialeah, Florida, 33017. Or order online at www.jesuspeoplemiami.org. Partners and friends, Dr. Gloria Williams and Pastor Rochelle Williams would like for you to join them for eight glorious days. May 23rd through 30th. Eight glorious days to walk the path Jesus walked in Galilee, to visit the Jordan River, to enjoy eye-opening moments overlooking Jerusalem on Mount Olive, and to visit Jesus' birthplace. Would you like to see where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found and much more? Then make plans to join the Israel 2016 Partners Tour, May 23rd through 30th. For more information on how you can be a part of this amazing life-changing tour, dial 561-368-9044 or log on to globaldestinytours.com. Welcome to Israel. Through your prayers and generous financial contributions, we are able to change lives around the world. Write and send donations to Right Connection. P.O. Box 172-570, Hialeah, Florida, 33017. Until next time, remember to get the right connection.